We're treating a, a young man, a 42 year old, with significant uh, degenerative disc disease at multiple levels. Unfortunately, on top of that, he also has uh, what we call a spondylolisthesis, so a congenital fracture uh, of, of the vertebrae in his uh, upper lumbar spine. And that's caused some instability and segmental uh, disease in the upper lumbar spine uh, that's combined with degenerative disc changes of the L4, 5, L5, S1 levels, which are the lower levels. Uh, he has uh, some narrowing of where the nerves are coming out, so he's having some pains radiating it into his legs, and then he has a facet joint inflammation and arthritis, which is causing localized low back pain. And so the uh, procedure that we're going to be doing today is relatively extensive. We're harvesting stem cells and PRP, and then placing this material uh, into the uh, degenerative discs themselves, the facet joints and the pars defects, and then we're going to be bathing the epidural space in just a PRP uh, concentrate. And so. Uh, we've done the harvesting and then we process uh, that material which takes about 45 minutes or so and then we're able to go back and do an interventional procedure much like those which we do um, with steroids and or have routinely done with steroids and other materials uh, but right what we're going to be using today uh, are regenerative materials placed precisely into the areas of injury and for uh, our patient today you know, he's going to be having approximately 10 sites uh, injected uh, very specifically and we use image guidance uh, for all of those procedures. We use image guidance for everything so for the bone marrow aspiration uh, component uh, we evaluate with a live x-ray or fluoroscope find out exactly where uh, we want to enter the bone marrow and numb up the overlying skin, numb up the periosteum or the covering of the bone and then place a small needle uh, into the bone through that pathway. And that's been defined by the live x-ray. The nice thing about our technique is it's a single stick uh, technique, so just one entrance through the skin uh, and one entrance through the bone. Now when we're in the bone marrow, we do actually move the needle within the bone marrow a few places. The reason we do that is that we want to extract the highest number of uh, mesenchymal stem cells, and they live in stem cell nests that are spread out throughout the bone marrow. If you only place the needle in one spot and just pull 60 cc's of bone marrow aspirate or fluid, most of what you're going to get it becomes purely peripheral blood and it has very low concentration of stem cells. So what you need to do is move to different locations. And the technique that we used uh, today is a technique where we actually move the needle into 10 different spots. We don't have to move it much, but you need to move it enough where you get a new stem cell nest and then also there's a specialized technique about how many syringes and the force of pressure that you're using. And there's been some elegant studies um, done out there that show that there's a, a certain technique that you'll actually have much higher yield and harvest uh, from the bone marrow aspiration. So we try to use the safest technique, so it's a one puncture technique, but also moving the needle while within the bone marrow cavity and extracting the highest number of uh, colony forming units or the, the mesenchymal stem cells. While, uh, and so what's the reason that you want only one puncture is that you're going to have uh, the least risk of uh, post-procedural hematoma plus it's a significantly more painful procedure uh, and really there's no increased uh, benefit if you uh, are able to move the needle around and get into the stem cell nests. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the technique for the bone marrow. Now using the same skin puncture hole then we're able to go into the uh, subcutaneous fat and I use ultrasound guidance uh, so that I can do the tumescence, which is placing uh, a mixture of lidocaine, epinephrine, and saline into the subcutaneous tissues. And what I like to do is go into the deeper fat layer. So you have a superficial fat layer, a fascia, and a deeper fat layer. And you can watch exactly where the needle and tumescent fluid goes into. And so you'll get much less cosmetic uh, effect of dimpling uh, and any ill effects on the overlying skin if you stay in the deeper fat. Uh, the amount of fat that we're taking out for musculoskeletal procedures is minimal, so it's not going to make a cosmetic difference unless uh, you kind of make a mistake, and so you don't want to do that. You want to get into the deep, deeper fat layer, spread out the tumescence, and uh, then when you're extracting or doing the liposuction, you can actually see where the uh, involved fat or tissue is, and you know where to go and then when you're done. So it's a very safe and simple technique. When we're finished with that, you know, the needle and the, the cannulas come out, 
we hold pressure and there's a single hold, um, no need for sutures. Uh, we make a sterile dressing and put it on top, on top of the tissues. And so it's a very clean, effective uh, technique that's minimally painful. We have had tremendous success with our uh, patients. They're coming back feeling better, less pain, increased functionality. Uh, they're able to work and sleep and play with their children, do daily household activities, hiking, even back to running, playing sports. It uh, really depends on where they're uh, starting from and what the dis underlying disease process and how severe it is. Uh, if there's concomitant arthritis or other issues, that may play some role as well. And not only are we seeing the patients come back and feeling good, but we've been doing follow-up MRIs on every patient to see what's happening with uh, the tissues. The patients that are doing well, we're seeing tremendous improvement in disc pathology that we're actually changing the shapes of the discs. The herniations are improving. Uh, the end plate changes are resolving. We're gaining some height in uh, the disc height. Uh, the inflammation in facet joints and the bone are reducing. Uh, the spinal stenosis that we're seeing is also reducing. So there are pretty, there are pretty dramatic changes that we're seeing on the imaging and they seem to have a very direct correlation with the symptom uh, resolution and improvement within our patients. So uh, it's a really exciting uh, time, it's a really exciting field and I think this uh, therapy is only going to get better and, and burgeon.